um, Su Jinghao is not in the class, so the other seven are in the class. All right, let's continue our lecture. So um, last week we mentioned that our lift coefficient can be uh, influenced by all these factors. So shape dependent, Reynolds number, compressibility effect, surface roughness, uh, front number, and comp composite body drag. So uh, you have seen a few graph for shape dependence, and we already show you the Reynolds number dependence. And today we're going to look at um, compressibility. Yeah? Okay. We also cover an example uh, on the spray particles and then a little bit on the conversion for the imperial unit which is a fit right the question give you eight feet and then uh, you convert into uh, unit si and of course uh, in uh, sm uh, you won't have this scenario uh, where all the question will be set in the unit si right um do you look look at uh, compressibility so compressibility, the word compressibility um, is linked up with Mach number, right? Mach number, which is defined by the upstream velocity divided by speed of sound, right? MA equal to U divided by C. So always take the uh, given uh, velocity or sometimes you need to find the velocity divided by speed of sound. So speed of sound, um, uh, it will change according to the temperature and pressure. Uh, there's a standard value for uh, speed of sound. Huh? So there's a table that you can refer, right? So table 1.8, it will give you the, the, the value. And even some, some uh, you can find this value, uh, speed of sound in, in the table, in the previous uh, test one appendix, huh? uh, the, the table that given in the exam, right? So again, if you see this, uh, it just means that your Reynolds number is influenced by these two factor inside the uh, the the the, psi, the the phi uh, symbol. So this is just a mathematic presentation to claim the statement above. Huh? Uh, means your uh, your compressibility effect is affected by the Reynolds number and Mach number. So this is just a chart. Um, let me see if you have this one. I uh, don't think you have this one in your hands up, but uh, you can find in in my slides. Uh. So again, the slide already uploaded on the model uh, on last week. All right. So um, if you focus on the screen, so uh, we have a graph that we have two axes. One on the left is your uh, drag coefficient. Another one is the uh, mark number. And then you have two lines there. One represent a uh, square shape and another represent a streamlined uh, profile or an uh, ellipse profile. So what happens if you increase the mark number from zero to one, right? Again, definition of mark number is that you take, you take the uh, velocity divided by speed of sound, right? So, um, the coming chapter, we will, we will see a loss of Mach number. So again, Mach number equal MA. MA equal to V divided by C, huh? velocity divided by speed of sound. So today you need to uh, memorize or remember what is the definition of Mach number. So if you increase the Mach number, you will see that after a certain value of your Mach number, your CD will increase, huh? your CD will increase. And same with the square shape uh, uh, object. Really. All these are determined through experimental data. That means you conduct experiment, you measure uh, the, the drag force or the pressure force inside the wind tunnel. Okay, uh, if you look at uh, this diagram at 0.5 mark number, um, you will see that um, the CD is quite stable, right? Before uh, Mach number 0.5, you see the, the, the CD is quite stable. But after Mach number 0.5, you see that the CD 
will change a little bit. All right. So these are the, the skill set that uh, we expected that you learn or you can show us that you know how to read graph, right? Know how to read graph. And another graph uh, we have here. Right, and another graph is also a uh, drag coefficient versus mark number, and you change the shape of the um, object. So what happens if you if your speed have mark number number one, which is your sonic flow? Again, I repeat uh, the mark number definition. Mark number equal your velocity divided by speed of sound. Okay, so when you have mark number one, meaning that your upstream velocity, so let's say you have a round body, this is your U. So when your U, when your U equal to speed of sound, where you will get one, you will see that uh, this region is called sonic flow. So when you have a sonic flow, mark number equal to one, you will see that the your CD from zero to one, it will increase, it will increase and will increase, right? And then it will continue to increase and behave uh, exponentially, right? Or quadratically, this is a quadratic curve, quadratic curve, right? All right. So you see that the reason, uh, the region before and after mark number one, right? So the region on the left, if your mark number less than one, we call it subsonic. If your mark number less than one, we call it subsonic. Mark number equal to one sonic. Mark number more than one, we call it supersonic. Okay, so these are the, the region that you should know that these are the particular technical word that you should know. All right, so when you go out to work later on, uh, when you communicate with other engineer, so these are the word that you, you, you will mention when you uh, want to talk about mark number, you want to talk about flow. Huh? So this is very important if you work as a design engineer, right? And there's a diagram here on the screen. You will see uh, what happens if you increase the mark number, right? What happens if you increase the, the, the velocity of the upstreams? So for this case, your upstream velocity uh, is 1.5 times of the speed of sound, all right? So mark number 1.5, and then this one is uh, mark number three, which is your upstream velocity equal to three times of the speed of sound. So you will have a short wave happening in front of the object. And also the distance between the short wave and the object is decreasing, meaning that the short wave is getting nearer and nearer to the object. Okay, this is a phenomena when you have a compressibility effect. All right? So I repeat, huh? so it's very important. So when you in when you have a higher mark number, what happened to the shock wave? Huh? So what happened to your shock wave when you have a higher Mach number? So your the distance between the shock wave and the object will be uh, decreasing. Huh? The, the, the distance between the shock wave and the object will be decreasing. The gap huh? between the shock wave and object will be decreasing. All right, and then another one, uh, this one also uh, an important uh, chart. Another one is uh, surface roughness. So if you look at surface roughness, um, you will see that uh, how the curve is behaved uh, 
on a on a graph. So we covered this uh, graph before uh, on last Friday. Um, this one is also a graph where you have a CD versus Reynolds number, and we have a golf uh, golf ball uh, line. You have a smooth line. And you have all lots of uh, relative roughness here. Okay. And um, for info, this graph is. I like this graph, uh, especially when it comes to exam question. So if you have time, take a look on this graph. Huh? So at least you know that there's a graph that relates uh, to a golf ball and the relative roughness. Which is give you the CD versus Reynolds number. And again, I would like to highlight the Reynolds number here. You are using kinematic viscosity. And I already uh, explained uh, there, are, there are two equations uh, for Reynolds number. If you compare the one that under Moody chart and this one, you will see that the viscosity uh, parameter is different. Huh? This is kinematic viscosity. Another one, another one is dynamic viscosity. So you can find in the table 1.8 the value. Huh? Okay. So yeah. And then this one you should not uh, be. Uh, I think you are familiar with this diagram. It's called Moody diagram, All right? Again, uh, focus on the Reynolds number, and the uh, kinematics. Uh, this is dynamic viscosity. All right, and uh, again, be comfortable with Moody diagram. We will use a lot of times huh, when it comes to your test. Huh? So um, some of you, you still not able to judge where is the location of the Reynolds number, All right? Uh, some of you in exam uh, test one previously, um, what you do is in your calculation, you calculate correct. But when you come to graph, you mark the wrong line. So it will give you the wrong uh, friction uh, factor, okay? All right, now we look at, uh, now if in your hands up, uh, uh, page 16, you'll see there's a CD and Reynolds number uh, for uh, different type of object. Uh, so you have a look in your hands up, page uh, 16, uh, 17 and 18, all right? There's a different uh, Reynolds number there, okay? Now we're going to look at your tutorial question 28. We're going to look at uh, one example. I think this question was also not in your anyway uh, you just focus on the screen so what we have here is a scenario so you are given uh, a golf ball with a certain diameter um, travel in a certain speed and of course this example is in unit imperial um, you uh, learn about the strategy solving uh, still the same um, so, and then another one is the tennis ball, huh? table tennis ball in uh, diameter given, weight is given, travel at a certain speed. Uh, determine the drag on the standard golf ball, smooth golf ball, and tennis ball, right? And determine the this acceleration um, for each ball under uh, each condition, and you're given the kinematic viscosity, which is this one. So uh, density of air is this one. So every time you see the, the hints given here, it means you always link up with the Reynolds number. So this is a viscosity. All right. All right, um, you look at the screen now. So we know that um, drag equation given by D equal to half rho u square, and then the area divided by CD. All right, so this is a uh, uh, drag equation. So this to here again, this one is dynamic pressure. Half row u square. 
this is the area and drag coefficient. Again, uh, if you have a sphere and you imagine you are particles of the air, what you see from the front is here, right? You'll see a cylindrical surface. It is your A. In this case, is pi d squared divided by 4 or pi r squared, right? So that's why you get this equation. And for golf ball, um, and then this is a Reynolds number. And you key in all the, the diameter, this kinematic viscosity and velocity, you'll get a Reynolds number. <clears throat> now Reynolds number is a, a dimensionless uh, parameter. So Reynolds number, you get this one. All right, uh, Vina, are you there? Uh, what does this number tell you? It is a laminar flow, turbulent flow, or trans transitional flow. Laminar flow. Sir. This this number, Reynolds number equal to one point seven nine ten power five. What type of flow that you have? Laminar flow. Sir. Why laminar flow? No, not sure. Sir. Not sure. Okay. Um, let me find. Um, Joshua? Joshua, what type of flow you have here? Your Reynolds number equal to 1.79 10 power 5. What type of flow you have, Joshua? Joshua, are you there? Joshua? Another lucky Guna Sakaran. Are you there? I repeat one more time. Joshua, are you there? Okay, second time. Joshua, are you there? Okay. Joshua not in class. All right, uh, Brian. Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, Brian, look at the Reynolds number. Reynolds number, what you calculate, you have 1.79 that times uh, 10 power 5. What kind of flow you have? Do you have laminar flow or you have transitional flow or you have turbulent flow? Turbulent, sir. Why turbulent? Uh, because it's greater than uh, 4,000. Correct. Very good. Uh, so because the value is more than 4,000, uh, the, the flow is turbulent. Eh? Okay, very well. Uh, for for tennis, all right, for tennis ball, your Reynolds number is 4.78 tenths power 4. 
So again, I will come back to uh, Vina. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, Vina, what type of flow you have? If you have Reynolds number four point seven eight, then yes. uh, what kind of flow you have? Brian, you stand by your the answer. Tell uh stand by, yeah. Stand by. So Vina, what type of flow you have? If your Reynolds number is four point seven eight, ten power four. Uh turbulent turbulent flow. What why? More than four thousand. Okay, good. Now you now you learn, huh? Okay, good. All right. So you have all these two number, and then you you go to the graph. So first one is you have one point seven nine. So it's about here, right? So you have four ten power four, ten power five means one. And then you have four, one to four you have three. Right, the, the 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, so it's about, about here. Lah. So then you go to the left hand side, you get the CD, the drag coefficient. You'll get uh, 2.5 huh, for normal ball, and then you go for uh, another one um, for smooth golf ball, so you will get. Uh, 0 0.51 uh, from the graph, uh, from 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 the graph, uh, from a graph area. So one is get two point. Uh, the previous one is this. Uh, the previous one is this one. For Reynolds number, you drag up, then you go for the normal golf ball, which is you follow this line. Follow this line, All right? The intersect of the line you drag to the left, you get 2.5. This one is for the golf ball, and you the question asks you to find the smooth line. So this is a smooth golf ball, right? And you drag to the left, you'll get one number on the left. Huh? So that's why you later you'll get about 0.5 for the smooth golf ball. So you have two CD there. So I think right. So uh. And then for tennis ball, tennis ball, your Reynolds number is 4.78, 10 power 4. So you go to the uh, Reynolds number here, 4.78 is about here. You move up, then move to the left, is 0.5. So again, uh, if in the test it asks you to plot graph, uh, it will carry some marks there. So for example, in this case, if you need to mark, it will at least cost you two marks. Huh? So one line, one mark. And sometimes it uh, it will up to three bucks that uh, if you need to do some marking on the graph, okay. So you get the the three CD value from the graph, right? So you have uh, all this number from the graph just now, in the graph alone. So one graph on the graph itself, you have uh, at least three lines or four lines. Uh, in this case, you have uh, six line, because each each line of number give you two line. Uh, one line, two lines, so it will cost you six marks already on one simple curve. Okay. Then we we find the, the value with the uh, drag uh, equation. And then you find, you substitute the number, you will get all the drag number, uh, all the drag for the particular scenario. So again, uh, in exam, you will see unit SI rather than the imperial unit, but the strategy uh, in solving still the same. Okay, first you find Reynolds number. Why you know that there's a Reynolds number, there's a hint there. Uh, there's a hint in the question. There's a hint in the question. When you are given uh, viscosity, then most of the time, you need to find Reynolds number. Okay, 
Um, and of course, in the final exam, uh, you won't see all these things because you will be given uh, the table for the material for the fluid, and it will be in the uh, last few pages of the question. So you need to uh, know. Huh? And the question also asks you about this deceleration. Means that um, you see the word acceleration or deceleration. It means you straight away pull out the second Newton law f equal to m a, right? And all this value, right? So weight equal to m g. So you convert the m in the f equal to m a equation. You substitute this equation inside here. So you F equal to W developed by G times the acceleration. And then you, uh, you, at the end, you get a ratio between the forces on the left hand side and the acceleration on the right hand side. So, and then we transform this equation into the scenario where we transform our force into a drag. And then just now we define a drag. You have the weight given because weight equal to mg. Uh, acceleration, uh, acceler gravity accelerations, you know. Uh, just, a, just a note, uh, um, since you're already at the university level and you're in the third year of uh, mechanical engineering, for this module, please use gravity equal to 9.81 meter second square. Uh. Since you're already in the university level, use gravity 9.81 rather than use 10. Uh. Not in this module. Don't use 10 in the calculation. All right, so just a reminder. Uh, if you are still at the secondary level, then it's all right to use 10. But you already come to your third year of your undergraduate studies. Please use more precise or more precise uh, parameter value. Okay. You get the ratio. You have all these things if you substitute all the value. So this is how we solve the 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 scenario. Huh? So the strategy is that um, what we learned today is that. Um, from the graph itself, you cleverly uh, use the parameter given, which is you find the Reynolds number, and then you project up then to meet intersect with the, any line that uh, related to the respective question, and then project to the left, you get the uh, CD value. Then from the CD value, you find the drag force. Even the equation is given in the graph. Okay. All right, so we have done with this uh, question. Any, any, any one of you have any question you want to ask me before we move to the next slide? Anything that you don't understand? So we don't we need to use the drag and the weight as well. Uh, the the drag you define, right? The drag you yeah. define just now. So you need when you come to the acceleration, okay. meaning that um, the drag you sub you have three cases to consider. One is the normal, one is the smooth golf, and one is tennis. So you have three drag just now. So what you substitute is substitute this one. Weight you you can find because each one of it in the question just now. You are given the the weight right now here. So each one of it you have weight. Of course, uh, in 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 the exam again you won't see imperial unit. You will see unit as unit as i. So you will see the weight given. So what you do is that you just substitute the value that you get because uh, drag you already have for three three scenario here. And then you just substitute drag for each scenario. W is given just now. So you get the ratio of the A divided by G equal to something. Then, of course, gravity is standard uh, 9.81.
So what you do is that you you. So the time uh, we are time speed 1.81 with time speed uh, 9.81. Uh, yes. Okay. So now for example for this one, uh, for normal graph you get the ratio right? Uh, A divided by G equal to 1.6 uh, 1.86. What you do for smooth a uh, normal graph ball will be 1.86 times 9.81. You'll get an answer in acceleration unit. Right? Same with the other two examples. Okay. Right? Good. Okay, let me check. Uh, there's one, one student missing just now. Joshua, are you still there? Joshua? Joshua, I don't need to show me the video. Answer my, uh, are you there? Yes, sir. All right, what happened uh, 10 minutes ago? Where are you? I was having a connection problem, sir. I tried to disconnect, but the video uh, hangs. I couldn't disconnect my video. Okay. Okay, just to check. Uh, okay, Joshua, what? If you get the Reynolds number, how do you know that the flow is laminar flow? How do you know? The laminar, I mean, the Reynolds number will be less than 2000. Less than 2000 or 2001, huh? 200, uh, 2100. Okay, good. All right. Excellent. Good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, another one uh, is called front front number effect. Uh, with this uh, in this module, uh, we won't pay uh, pay attention to this one because this one is on the open channel and uh, wave. Uh, is is uh, front number most of the time will be used in the ship design. Uh, if you interested in the shipyard uh, or you work in the shipyard or in related to boat or related to a floating object. Uh, above the float that generate wave, then this number is very popular. Okay, so from number we will just uh, touch and go for this uh, module. Meaning, uh, you will see this uh, this 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 formula before, but uh, I won't ask you uh, in in SM. Okay, right. Just uh, as as long as you know that oh, I heard this number before, uh, what is flow number and what is it in general principle, you're able to explain uh, why uh, flow number related to what, right? It related to uh, an object that create wave, huh? uh, for example, ship. Uh, you remember flow number link up with the ship, boat, uh, those that are above water, uh, then you are fine. So this is just an example uh, how the front number link up with CD. So um, yeah, so the formula is given in the chart. So if you increase the the front number, the drag also will will, will increase. All these are uh, get from uh, experiment, uh, or get all these uh, all these uh, uh, experiment, and then you see the effect of uh, these two settings. So on the above uh, diagram here with no bow buck and the one with the bow buck with this, you see the front here. So it's explain why some of the ship you have the something in front of the ship, some we don't have, right? So for those uh, travel in the ocean, uh, need to cross the Atlantic Ocean with the big wave, then you will see there's a, a mechanism in front. And uh, for those shallow water, most of the time you don't need uh, this mechanism. Okay, right. So uh, as an engineer, um, you should always ask question why? Why there's a certain design, 
when you see a car, a sport car, a spoiler, all these things, why why we need that mechanism? Right? You should always ask question. Why why there is a why, what is the reason when they install something uh, in front or top or something uh, or sometimes bottom? Okay. All right. Now, composite body is uh, something very important for as an engineer. Uh, whether you want to work as uh, a design engineer or you want to work in a civil work, then uh, this is very important. Okay. So uh, we uh, we look at one example. All right. We we'll look at uh, question twenty eight. Um, now, composite track is one of the things that uh, will influence the CD of the body. So composite itself means collective of uh, something. So if you if you look at the diagram here, the drag created on the, this system here, you will have a uh, drag of the pole plus the flag, huh? plus the flag here. So we look at one example. Huh? So this just a... Uh, 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 illustration of uh, development of the car design from 1920 to uh, the current one, uh, 2010, so like 10 years ago. So CD uh, drag coefficient on the car, on automotive, is reducing because of the streamlining. Huh? Because of the streamlining, the design is improved uh, and it's getting faster and faster. Okay. Yeah, so these are the the, uh, the the chart that that I mentioned just now in your hands out, so you can have a look in it lah. So these are all the standard that we use. So if you are given an object like this and then you need to calculate the CD, straight away you go to this table and find uh, and find the let, uh, respective uh, equation. So for example, I give you for example this one, semicircular shell, which is a thin film that have an arc. So the area already given, b plus uh, b times d, and drag coefficient will be different. You see the arrow here. Arrow from the left to right give you CD value 2.3, but if the flow from the back here, from the right to the left, you will get 1.1. So be careful. Uh, when you look at the table, uh, pay a bit attention to the detail. And Reynolds number already given. So if you have this scenario, uh, if you're given a semicircular shell, then um, straight away use this Reynolds number. Okay. Uh, so rectangular is this one, I beam, uh, hexagon, and so on. All these are very straightforward. Uh, yeah, just refer to table. So you go to work later on, you work as an engineer, you also refer to a standard when you design something or when you uh, communicate the engineering information to your client, right? All these are the, the, the value that you use, right? So when you work outside there, most of the time your customer will ask for the validation of your uh, calculation. So these are the attachment or the, the source that you will you use. Huh? All these are from the hand, uh, handbook. Huh? All right. Now we look at one um, civil design. Uh, and this one you can find in the your hands up question 28. Um, yeah, so this question I think come out uh, in one of the final exam. I think uh, yeah, in, inside the airline university. I think within five years ago or... All right, I, I've seen this question before in the question bank. All right, All right. So um, you have, uh, if you see this object, uh, you see this uh, object uh, in Malaysia. You see a cone shape is a water tank, and uh, in this, in this one is a sphere shape uh, with a diameter, and then you have a cylinder object here. So you have this object uh, with the wind velocity travel at 97 km per hour from the left to right and the diameter for the object is given diameter diameter and b is the height of the object so we ask you to estimate the torque or the moment need at the base to keep the tower from tipping over so from um, uh, engine fluid mechanics itself you can estimate the moment or on a structure itself, 
fine. So again, uh, refresh what is moment. If you have a force, this is the force. And this is the reference point. This is the reference point X. And you have a distance perpendicular D, moment or torque equal to F times D. So this is a moment, and this one is in the clockwise direction. So this is the, the definition for moment or torque. You take the force times D, and of course, the relationship between force and uh, the distance must be perpendicular to each other. Huh? So this is the, the, the detail or refreshment for what is moment or torque. All right, you convert this one, the, the real scenario, into a free body diagram. So I'll give you some time to copy this free body diagram into your hands off. So what you do is that you see this uh, sphere object, you draw a sphere, and then you see a cylindrical object, you draw a rectangular. And then you have uh, DS means drag, drag force on the sphere object. DS uh, and uh, solid arrow means a force, right? Means a force acting on the object. So this one is a drag because of the sphere, uh, sphere shape. And then you have uh, DC means drag on the cylindrical object acting half from the body, from the cylindrical body. And then you have a weight of the water, water tower, store water. So they have a water acting on the center of gravity or center of weight, or, all right, or center of the structure, CG, and then going down with the weight, W. And then the rest is just a reaction force. It's just a reaction force. So by standard, you just input the or you assume that the moment is anti-clockwise positive. Assume, huh? So of course you can draw your your free body diagram uh, clockwise, no problem, huh? But at the end, if you get a negative, means your assumption is wrong, huh? So just just to uh, and this, all right, when you draw like this, means you assume the moment is anticlockwise positive, and you have the reaction on the y direction and x direction. Why we need to focus on this point? Because the the question asks you to focus on the base of the tower, right? Because we need to find a moment, this 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 moment, um, to so that we have we, we can build a structure that can handle this moment and also the reaction force here right at a distance distance from the base to the center of the sphere here is b plus d divided by 2 so d divided by 2 means the diameter of the sphere so this is your diameter of the sphere so if you have half All right, so we have half plus the, this is the B. So from here to here, you get DS divided by two. And the drag uh, force on the cone here or on the cylinder here is half, uh, is half the height of this one. Okay, any question on the free body diagram? All right. We will, we will see a lot of free body diagram in this module also. Right? So every time you start with the diagram and then you solve from the free body diagram. Diamet uh, the parameter is given, DS, DC, B is there. Right? Can we move on to the next slide? 
We done copy. Yeah, can we for forward? Move forward. Okay, good. Right, so from a free body diagram, you know that we break into uh, two, two objects here. One is sphere, one is cylinder. Huh? We have two regions that we need to focus on. All right, we continue to use this diagram and solve question. Basically, uh, the moment, again, the moment, again, moment, what is moment? Force times distance. is a reference point. Moment equal to force times T. So we have two components. This is the sphere. This is the cylinder. Okay. So how do you get moment for sphere? You take the force is D. Distance D here is b plus d squared sorry you take the b plus ds divided by 2 this one plus dc which is here the force times the distance b divided by 2 so you have two moments you combine together right and then the drag force this is just you modify from the general equation from the from the drag Right, D equal to half rho U square C D A or A C D same. Right, you just modify. A again is what seen by the flow. So you have by D square divided by four, and this one for the cone because the flow is seeing a rectangular shape. This is seeing a sphere. This A. Huh? So the flow is seeing the for the cone drag for the uh, the the drag for the cylinder DC here. The flow is seeing a rectangular from the front. So rectangular, you take the DC times the B. Okay. DC is a diameter of the cylinder. The rest is a substitution. Okay. And application of the graph given in the hands up below. There's a graph given by CD versus Reynolds number. Two line there. One represents smooth sphere. One represents smooth cylinder. Okay. So if you're given a graph, or you need to refer to a certain graph, then or in the question, um, this question is not not complete. So sometimes uh, the, the question need to mention that uh, assume the object have a smooth surface or something, so that you know which graph to refer. So this question is illustrate to you that um, is assuming the object having a smooth sphere. All right, Reynolds number. If you calculate, you will get this number for sphere. For cylinder, you will get this number. So again, if you see the Reynolds number, you see that this is more than 4,000, means uh, both get the billion flow. Okay. But again, uh, this in this scenario, in this uh, example, the Reynolds number calculate you calculate is to refer to the graph given, All right? It is in this in this uh, section. You don't need to know the type of flow, uh, but you will related uh, when it come to final exam. Huh? Final exam, you will you will link each other together. So uh, Reynolds number, you refer to the graph and then project from the bottom, go up and then go to the left. You get your CD, All right? From the CD, you calculate the drag, right? You calculate the drag. Then you can find a moment. For the question, all right. So all this lah. So you get your CD for sphere is about 0 0.3. 
you get your uh, your CD for the uh, cylinder, you get about 0.7. Okay, this is just a, a textbook reference answer. So you get a Reynolds number from the calculation, and then you you use the graph. Then hit the intersection of the line. Then move to the left, you get your CD. And you should know automatically from CD itself, you can find the drag force, right? So you CD for sphere is 0.3, CD for cylinder, you get 0.7. Right, so from these two equations, you should be able to solve the question. You substitute the CD just now. Rho is given, uh, not give, if not given, you need to refer to the uh, table uh, given. So it is, we have a wind, so it's no, normal air. So you should refer to the rho. Huh? So again, in test one, uh, I catch one or two of you uh, because I use uh, the water at 20 degrees C and most of, uh, I think I catch one, one of you, you are using a normal, uh, a normal row, uh, normal density, right, for water. So you need to refer to the table at 20 degrees C. All right, uh, this kind of this side of uh, trick I will still use in the final exam, so be careful and watch out for the uh, important uh, information. Huh? Yeah. So you substitute all the value that you can find, you can get the moment. So you just substitute inside there, and then you get the answer. Right. So the the answer in this case uh, you can find the answer. If this one is in imperial unit. But again, what important is that you, you learn about the, the concept because all this will change. Uh, what is this example trying to uh, trying to um, tell you is that it try to refresh. Do you understand what is moment? All right. And then do you know how to convert the scenario into a free body diagram? Um, do you understand in principle uh, where does the force acting on? So for example, the sphere, the drag force acting at the center of the object, cylinder also acting at the center of the object. And then do you know how to uh, analyze the distance by related to the uh, moment definition, force time distance, and then the, the weight also? Why there's no why the weight do not carry any effect? Huh? Why? Huh? Because the weight the weight do not meet the definition of the moment. Right? There's no D there. There's no D for the Dublin. So there's no moment created by the water. Okay. So again, what kind of uh, free Free question that you can get in the exam. Sometimes I will ask you, right? Uh, Sometimes I will ask you something, something like uh, estimate. Oh, what happened? Right? Estim what happened to my? Estimate the torque created by the water, uh, by the weight of the water. So you see something very tricky like this, right? So um, I've given you a, a application and then I just try to, to test your intelligence or your awareness in the exam. So for example, I ask you to estimate the torque created by the weight of the water of this water tower. The answer is zero straight away. Right? And maybe this one will carry some marks, uh, like five marks or uh, four marks, and then explain. Explain why you get zero. All right? Because of definition of the torque just now. F times D, there's no distance. From the equation, the D is zero, so that's why you get 
uh, zero torque from the water. Okay, something like this, right? So, yeah. All the 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 detail of the number here, um, you will change in the exam, or you will change when you go to work later on, right? Learn about the 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 concept, the important concept and principle, is is better, huh? Okay. Right. Right. The next one, we're going to look at um one video, then we go for a short break, huh? Uh, go watch this uh, YouTube video. Maybe I turn off the. Okay, I start from the beginning. This is uh, one experiment uh, conduct in a house. Um, later on uh, in the in the second session, we will look at what what is leaf. Huh? What is leaf? So you can set up a very simple experiment using a paper. You fold the A4 paper into a teardrop shape, and then you tie it to a straw. You make a hole in both sides, and then you insert a straw so that you can attach a string uh, through the, 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 the center of the straw so that you can slide, you can slice your, your, your object up and down, the flea moving. So what does this experiment, uh, how this experiment conducted is that once you set up the position uh, of the uh, airflow of the uh, airfoil, and then you open the, the fan. Fan is your upstream velocity. And then you see the reaction of the object. Right, the, the yellow straw is just a, just a, a support uh, for it. And then when you open the fan, the object will flow, will, will float up. Huh? So when you close the fan, slowly, when you uh, slow down the speed of the fan, you'll see this one will drop. Okay, so later on, we will, we will explain about this phenomena in the let, uh, second session. Huh? So this one is a, very simple experiment that you can uh, do it yourself. Huh? Okay, um, any questions so far? Any question you want to ask me? Let me stop the recording first.